If you ever shout the name Jesus on the streets, don't be surprised if this happens. I know your family is broken. I know your father. I know your mother. I know your grandmother before you. So don't play with me, all right? Neither one of you. Get off that mic and go away from here right now. Or I'll make this nation rise against you. Do you understand me? Do you each and every one of you understand me? Don't play with the God that ruins this earth. Now back away! God bless you. This Christian apologist was having a civilized debate until she arrived. As to understand meaning and purpose in life. But if there is no God, please, don't life stop. is meaningless, sir. She can do whatever she wants to. That's her worldview. So she can do whatever she wants to. Actually, I'm not allowed to say my worldview because Man, you can speak that anytime I don't you want to. Your God's right, but I don't believe in the Bible. Why is woman Guess valuable? What? Why is woman valuable? I don't really know, according to you. You're spreading hate and saying that your chosen people who believe in your Bible are correct. That's and not that what I've said at all. Correct. Yes, you're trying to be a Then flat, flat out to this man, I said, if I say I believe in Jesus and hate him, what am I? You're and this a guy, hypocrite. And thank you. Are you. A hypocrite, exactly. And that's why you're up so here. And that's what you're saying. And it's just annoying. I'm so sick of seeing this on campus. Can't you go film your little project somewhere else? Look, like, I am so so tired of just having to walk around on my campus and get preached at about the Bible. I'm so tired of having non-stop conversations about what the Bible says. Like, don't go somewhere else. Go I don't want to go away. I want this to go away. Guess what I believe? I believe that I am God. I am God. I am my own God. What does God. that mean, you're God? It means that I create my own reality and I manifest what I want to see in this world. Go create your own reality am, somewhere else. We're trying to have a discussion. Yeah, I am creating my own reality right here. I'm okay. saying your discussion is so, stupid. And it shouldn't go on. Look, it's pointless. We, we disagree with each other, so we're respecting and disagreeing. Look, there's a difference between what you're doing and what we're doing. What you're doing is you're, you're disrespecting both of us, just talking over us. You literally yeah. said you're God. And yeah. what we're trying to do is have an intelligent discussion. We disagree, fundamentally. You're having but an intelligent we discussion we... by misquoting people. It's annoying, and I'm making a mockery of you because that's what it deserves I'm to be I'm sorry we're you. annoying you, but there's a real virtue in being intellectually honest and trying to air your opinions out and learn the weaknesses of your views and the strengths of other views. That's why I, even if I disagree with this man, I respect him. I'm glad he comes here. I don't and want him coming in here anymore. I want him to be. No one would believe an atheist would do this to Ray Comfort if it wasn't recorded on tape. I mean, I won't shake your hand. No, no, I didn't. I'm not going to shake your hand. You are disgusting. Because you I can't you answer me. Better. You can't answer me. That's why you're running away. Because you cannot answer me, can you? I care about you and I care about where you spend eternity. And don't run off. And don't go running off just because you can't answer someone. You don't tell us. No, you said something so disgusting. All right. What did I it's, say was disgusting? It's 2014. All right? If you can't keep your body mouth clean, we have to get someone else up. Okay. Okay, nice to talk to you. Yeah. 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 Oh, so Speaking of atheists, this one certainly messed with the wrong street preacher. I missed the gentleman's question, yeah. The gentleman's question is how did a good God manage to create the devil? The answer is he created him as an angel with choice, and that choice Lucifer he made to rebel against God. Thank you very much. How, how can God create something? that can change its mind. Did God make a mistake then? The gentleman's question is, how can God create something that can change his mind? God can change his mind. He changed his mind. And Abraham said, if there's 30, will you wipe them out? Is there's 20, if there's 10, and he kept whittling it down, and he changed his mind. So the answer is, he can change his mind. Can you please ask me a difficult question? I'm going to leave that aside. I'm going to leave that aside. I'm going to leave that aside. I'm going to, I'm going to leave. Easy ones. Give me a difficult one. That's right. You're not going to wriggle out of this business of the devil, right? Okay, so you're saying... Devil and I said he made him pure and the devil fell. Why is that a wriggle out? Hey, hey, come on, ask me. So, Sign, sealed, and delivered. Sorry, sorry. Please be quiet. Okay. But surely, surely God knows everything. He knew the future. 
So therefore he knew that he was going to change his mind. He knew that he was going to end up creating the devil. So you don't wriggle out of it. Your God created the devil and your God is therefore partly evil. Ladies and gentlemen, that is wrong. Listen to this. Somebody says to me, I'm having a little baby. And I say that's great news. The baby born was okay. But he came into this world and did a terrible thing. Same with the devil. And I'll tell you how powerful he is. He's got that man in the corner. Oh, I thought you were with him. He's got no hope. And I'll show you why he's got no hope, sir. You've asked me two questions. Here's a question to you. Go and wriggle out. You are the wriggler. I've seen you on Batman. You are the wriggler. You are the wriggler. You here. You're from Gotham City. Ray Wrigley, he's Wrigley. Isn't he Wrigley now? My question. Here's my question. Here's my question. Give some hope to dying men. Give some hope to dying men. What have you got? I'm a dying man. Give me some hope. Listen to the Wriggler. Off you go. I'm not wriggling. I am. You're the Wriggler. You worship the God that is both good and evil. Unless. Unless he created evil and he made a mistake. Yeah. God loves this world. He loves you. And he died on a cross. If you want free dancing lessons, the wriggler over there. Hey! Thank goodness I'm not going to have to spend eternity with you. Bye, wriggler. Thank you, the wriggler. Uh, hey, I'm not a wriggler. I'm not a wriggler. No, 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 no. Well. <laughs> So, over to you. What more evidence do you need that Christ Jesus is real and he has an enemy who is trying to stop souls from hearing the truth? Now, under normal circumstances, if you've subscribed to this channel, you'll know at the end of every video, I preach the gospel in this room. But today, I want to do something a little bit different. Today, I want to preach the gospel to you on the streets. And I want to remind you, if you didn't know this already, I have not quit street preaching. I just put all of my street preaching videos on another channel called the Street Preaching Channel. So please do make sure you subscribe to that and check out the description for more information. Do you know the Bible says that God knows the very numbers of hairs that are on your head? Now, why, you might be thinking, why is a bald guy talking to me about hair on, on my head today? You know, what, what relevance has that got? But it, it just proves the point, doesn't it? God knows everything about you. Did you know this? God loves you. There's no one in this world today, I don't care who you are, where you're from today in Lancaster, there's no one here today you can say that no one loves me because God loves you. Just look at the cross. Look at the crown of thorns that Jesus had in his skull. Look at the nails through his hands and his feet. He was spat on, he was mocked. He, he had his beard plucked out and there on the cross he died the most ugly death for you because he loved you. Now I know I'm trying to sort of talk to you and build a bit of rapport here but I don't want to offend anyone but did you know this as well? Every single person in Lancaster today has a massive problem. Maybe you're saying, oh, you don't know my problem, but I'm telling you, everyone has a massive problem. You've actually got two problems. Here's the first one. You're a sinner. Did you know you're a sinner? Did you know the man standing in front of you right now is a sinner? Here's a question for you. I'm a married man. Do you think that I've ever made my wife cry before? Nod your head if you think I've made my wife cry before. You think I have? I have actually, okay? Now, you see these eyes. Everyone look at my nice blue eyes. Imagine everything I've ever seen in my life was put on this board. Would I be embarrassed? Would I be ashamed of anything I've ever looked at? I would. Now, I know I'm a dweeb. I know many of you, if you hit me in the face, I'd fall straight to the floor. But you see these fists here? Do you think I've ever punched anyone with these fists before? I have, actually. But now ask me this question. You ask it me. Am I going to heaven? I am. Not because I'm a good person, as you see I'm not, but because there are two types of people that get into heaven. Perfect people and forgiven people. Now is there anyone here today in Lancaster who can raise their hand and say, I am a perfect man, I am a perfect woman, I've never done anything wrong. We can't, can we? Because that first problem, we're all sinners. Here's the second problem for you. Every single one of you, here's a shocking statistic that I bet you've never thought about. Are you ready for this? This is, this is going to blow your brains out. Are you ready for this shocking statistic? 10 out of 10 people die. Is that right or is it wrong? I see some people laughing. You don't want to give too much attention to the street preacher because you know I'll pull you in here. But it's true, isn't it? 10 out of 10 people die. Here's another one for you. 150,000 people die every day. And I bet you every single one of them, they had plans for next week. 
I'm going to the dentist, I'm going to my grandma's house, I'm going to go to Tesco, and that's it, into eternity. Two problems you and I have got. We're both sinners, and we're both going to die. But here is the hope. I know a man who can take you, who can take your problem of sin, and delete it, get rid of it, erase it, it's gone no more. Just like we've got the River Loon there. If you get, I don't know, a load of rubbish, and you throw it in the River Loon, it'll be washed away and it's gone forever. Did you know the blood of Jesus Christ can wash your sins away? There is a river of forgiveness and that blood can get rid of your sins. It can be gone forevermore. Here's the second problem that you heard. Death, okay? Did you know the Lord Jesus Christ, the man Christ, can beat your grave? That's pretty amazing. Do you think that's true? The man Jesus Christ can beat your grave. Now, I don't know you personally, but imagine this happens. Imagine now you die. Okay, you die today. I hope it doesn't, but imagine you die. If in three days' time you came back from the dead and said, I've beaten the grave, do you not think people would pay attention to what you've got to say? Do you not think people would say, that's pretty impressive. This man, this woman has risen from the dead. So if we would take notice of anyone who's risen from the dead, why is it so many people walk past the Lord Jesus Christ who says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man can come to the Father except through me. He says, I'll beat your grave, I'll give you eternal life. And it's all you have to do is come and receive him. Why do you ignore him? Why is it that most churches today are empty? Why is it that if you've got a Bible at home, most probably there's a lot of dust on it? Why is it that you don't want to consider this amazing gift of eternal life? It's free and Jesus died for you. Only you can answer that question. I can't answer it for you. Only you can decide why is it I'm rejecting Jesus who loved me, who died on that cross. Because he welcomes all. He opens his arms and says, come. But there is a day, now listen to this warning. There is a day when mercy is cut off. There is a day, did you know that there are people in hell who pray but no one answers? There's a day when it's all finished and it's too late. The Bible says it is appointed for man once to die and after that the judgment. And you need to know that when you face God, have you received the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who can wash away your sins and forgive you? Or have you said, it's okay, I'm alright on my own? It'd be very foolish for any man to jump out of a plane without a parachute. And likewise, it'd be very, very foolish for any of you to leave planet Earth about the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who can rescue you and beat your grave. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Uh, Come and have a chat to us if you want to know more. Make sure you don't forget to check out the preachers that were featured in this video. Yes, we might not agree on everything in the Bible, but we're all working in the same vineyard and we're all seeking to win souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. So go and check them out in the description box and encourage them. And if you haven't yet seen the video where I encountered the worst heckler I have ever met while street preaching, click here and check it out.